So once I have logged into PCSE online, then to start my type one certificate, the first thing I need to do is click the GP pensions and payments button. And then on my screen, I'll have a pensions option. And then I have a number of different options within the pension space. So the one that I'm looking for is annual certificate type one. Annual certificate forms, and then this will bring up the type one entry screen. So we can see here that the screen has populated with my fictitious name, fictitious SD number, pension scheme membership number and GMC number. So the first thing I need to do is to select the practice that I'm going to complete the type one form for. So I have this practice here. If I was a partner at more than one practice, then I would have multiple options to choose from in the drop down. So I've selected that practice. I will then need to select the financial year. So we're looking to complete 22, 23 and just click OK to confirm. And then the practice ODS code, contract type, etc., will populate on my screen. Um, if I have left the practice during the year, then I would complete the date in box K, but I have been there the full year. So we simply move on, save and next. And this is where we start to put our key data in. Now we are on to the employee contributions tab, which is where you'll start to see some changes compared to previous years type one forms. Just for ease of viewing, we can hide the left hand navigation column and just blow the, the page up a little bit more. Um, and you can see here that the box 46 populates automatically with box 36, just like the form on the NHS pensions website. The solo income has also pulled through from box 37, as you would expect. And if there's any locum income, etc., to be added, then this is where it would be declared. So if we scroll down to box 54 and 54A, then this is where the annualised income for the two six month periods is entered. So using the annualisation calculator on the NHS pensions website, then we have our figures. So the April to September income annualised uh, comes out at 16,395.37 on the calculator um, and October to March 10,195.37. All of the solo work in this instance was done in the first half of the year. So when we plug the figures into the calculator um, from the NHS pensions website, um, this is what the annualised amounts come out at. So what we then need to do is to check what tier rate would be applicable for each period. So box 54, 16395 for April to September. If you scroll up to the top of the page, you can see the tier rates just by clicking here, we've got 5.6 for April to September. So if we just go and populate that, 5.6%. And then 10.195.37 in October to March, so 10.195 in that second period gives us 5.1% for the tier rates there. So we can click here. There we go. So then we come to the part where the pensionable profit is apportioned. We're going to go with the standard method, which would give us 183 days in April to September and 182 days October to March. Again, there's guidance on this on the um, NHS pensions website. Our solo work was all done in the first half of the year, as I mentioned. So our 3,100 goes here. And these are the figures then that will be used to calculate the contributions due. So if we click Save and Next again, and we can see here 
that our figures are populating. Now, we can click hide navigation menu just to bring up the full screen and make it easier to see. We can see that 5.6% tier rates has populated here, calculating the contributions due at 296.21 for employees. And we had already paid £300 for that period through the estimate process from the practice. So there's a slight overpayment in the employee contributions there. And then the employer contributions, then again, we have a slight, we have a bit of an overpayment there. So that has calculated for us and brought them together as, as a total for the six months. We then go to the solo income where it's calculated that on 5.6%, the employee contributions were 173.60, but the solo provider has paid 164.60 for that period, probably on 5%. So slight underpayment there and we've got our employer contributions again. So again, we've got the, the six month period figures here. We then move on to the next six months. So this is taking us to the next tab. Again, if we want to check, then we can go back to bring up the navigation menu and we can see that we're on now on October to March. I'll hide that again because it is easier to see the full screen. And again, we've got the calculations due calculated based on the 5.1% tier rate now for October to March. And that's then compared to what has already been deducted through the practice estimate process. Again, for employer contributions, we've got that calculation and we've got the overall difference for the, the six months. If we go to solo, then we don't have any solo contributions to calculate. We didn't have any solo contributions paid for the period. So that's why we have zero in here. So we save next and this will take us through now to where I can enter any additional information that applies. Use the upload button to upload any documents that I need to upload. And if I have a, an accountant or advisor acting on my behalf, then I can populate their details here um, and that will save into my PCSE online submission. So we are now on the declaration page. Um, let's just click back to the menu to show that. So we can see that the declaration page is highlighted. I will hide this again so we can see the screen a lot easier. So what we can see here is that the pensionable profit for the year has populated as expected. And then I have the choice of opting to have any solo adjustments collected through my main practice contract, which is the more straightforward approach. So I'm going to leave that ticked rather than switching to trying to go to the solo employing authority or the out of hours provider, whoever I've worked for, to get those adjustments sorted. So if I keep that on the main practice contract, then any adjustments will be added together. I just need to confirm that where I've included the agent details for my accountant or advisor, then that they can be used by PCSE. So that's just coming up with a message there because I haven't actually entered anything in the page, so that's a good reminder. So what we can see then is that we have our two tier rates that have pulled through. So we had 5.6% for the first six months and 5.1% for the second half of the year. The full contributions due as calculated, 73810 already paid for the full year is 7060. So there's a slight overpayment there, which will be a, a refund back to the practice of 3250. When it comes to employer contributions, then we've got again a bit of an overpayment. 217 to 85 had been collected against 196286. Again, remembering this is all test data, but for illustration purposes, there's an adjustment there of 207.99 of an overpayment. So putting these two figures together from box 114 and 111, 
then that is the amount that's due to go back to the practice. So that's 240.49 will be refunded in the next contractual payment run to my practice. I click submit and that's the end of the process.